Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, it's another cold, rainy day in Indiana. It's about 40, 45 degrees today. It's been raining most of the day, off and on, sometimes pretty heavy, and um, it's just not pretty at all. In fact, I was just coming out here, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to film inside or not, but Alex is supposed to get home a little bit earlier tonight. He was actually supposed to leave about a half an hour ago from work, and because um, he said he was going to leave about 4, I think it's like 10 till 5 right now, and he said he's going to leave between like 4 and 4.15. But he hasn't left yet. So I was like, well, if he leaves like right now and then he comes home, I want to make sure that he can just like hang out inside. So I was like, it's not too cold with my gray hoodie, gray apology hoodie on and my coat. I can sit out here and vlog for a little bit. But I came out here and I was like, this is the first time that you will probably ever hear me say this. I'm like wanting to get into these weeds and pick these weeds. Maybe it's just that I'm really excited to have um, our walkway look really nice this year and I can't wait to like move the hostas and have there be like four hostas and four hostas and whatever. But I'm like, I really want to get out here and like pick these weeds and I want to make the, I got to clear the cobwebs and make the front porch look really, really nice. But actually after it rains is probably a great time to pick the weeds, you know, because they're kind of loose and stuff like that. But it's too cold. Like I don't want to do that today. Like I don't want to sit out here in the cold with my gardening gloves on while it's like misting and raining and, and pick the weeds. So we're not going to do that today. We'll wait. I thought tomorrow it was supposed to be a much nicer, but when I was in therapy, I said to him at the beginning, I said, he said something about the weather, and I said, well, it's supposed to be nicer tomorrow, and he goes, oh, I think it's supposed to be the same, and um, I looked, I was like, well, let's look, and so I looked, and tomorrow it's supposed to be the exact same as it is today, and then actually, um, I would just, we had notifications on our Alexa, and so I was like, notifications, and she said that there was like a freeze warning on the 6th or something, which today's the 4th, which that's Saturday, so I don't know, it's supposed to be warmer next week, so hopefully it's much nicer next week, and I can be out here and whatever, um, yeah, so I really wanted to sit out here last night and start my audiobook, and I didn't start an audiobook last night, because it was like so cold to sit out here. So I just sat inside most of the night last night. Had a very, very relaxing night last night. Um, I just actually just made a, look, you can see the steam coming off of it. I just made a cup of coffee, trying to get through the uh, through the Christmas K-Pods. I, um, last night I was, I had like probably three cups of coffee last night. They get like, they start getting cold because I let them sit there for so long. So there's like this much left and then I'll like make another cup of coffee, but I was watching this show, which I'll get to in a second. I was like wanting to drink coffee while I watch a specific show. <laughs> do you ever do that? So anyway, you're like, okay, this is a show that I want to drink a cup of coffee. It was like a true crime show. I'll talk about it in a second. So I went in there and I was like, what do I, I looked to see, I was like, I mentioned this in my vlog that I wasn't sure if I had that Barney's white Christmas coffee, which I don't. I'm completely out of it. I looked because I have like four boxes in this like corner cabinet thing of coffee. And I looked and I had that brown sugar cinnamon coffee and I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a cup of coffee, make a cup of that. So I made a cup of that. So I still have about six of these Christmas K-Pods and then I'm done with the Christmas K-Pods. They'll be gone and I'll, it'll, before we know it, it'll be Christmas and I'll be buying Christmas. Let's not, let's not rush it too soon because we got spring and summer still to go. So anyway, yeah, last night was very relaxing. Ordered food again. It is, I just did my weight loss journey update well, I did it a couple hours ago. I've since then filmed a drama video and a Peter Rizmo's video, but I did it as soon as I got done with therapy. I really, I did not want to do this weight loss update today. I got on the scales today, and I just was like, here we are again. And, um, but I already talked about that on my weight loss journey. I'm, the thing is, I'm not, um, I know what I need to do. I'm not going to have a long conversation about this. I'm going to save it for those videos. But I know what I need to do to stay on it. And, um, yeah, I just have completely fallen off track. So it's just time to start doing what I need to do and, and stop ordering food and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, ordered food last night and Alex was not hungry because he had eaten a big lunch at work. Like they had all gone out to eat yesterday and I think he had like, I can't remember what he said he had, but anyway, 
he had a big lunch yesterday at work, so he didn't want to eat anything. Was that yesterday or the day before? Well, he didn't want to eat anything yesterday. And so, and he also had leftover pizza. So he was upstairs looking at TikToks and doing some work and stuff like that. And so I was like, do you want to watch The Valley? And he was like, no, I watched that first episode, but I don't think I'm going to watch it. So I watched The Valley. I had gotten caught up with it, and so I watched this week's episode that just came out on Tuesday. I don't dislike it. It's just, um... It's very much just about, like, the storylines of, of Jax and Kristen Doty because they were who were popular in Vanderpump Rules, and I think that's who most people are watching it for. It was okay. I mean, it's okay. Like, I'll keep watching it. It's not, it's not horrible. I need to make a video about it for my reality TV channel. So I watched that, and as soon as I was getting done watching that, I was still, like, eating... Because so I was waiting for my food to come. I got Cheesecake Factory. So um, I was waiting for my food to come, and I was, like, almost done with the show. So when it was done... I shot it up to Alex, and I was like, do you want to watch Vanderpump Rules? Because it had been on Tuesday night. So he came downstairs, we watched Vanderpump Rules, and then afterwards, he was like really tired. He was like, I'm going upstairs, I'm going to watch an episode of Shameless, I'm going to go to bed. And I was like, okay. It was pretty early. It was like, at that point, it was like nine or something like that. And so I said, well, I'll lay down with you guys for a little bit. So I lay down, <clears throat> I slept so good and so deep. I had such a deep, um, took such a deep nap. And I slept for like two hours. And I could have slept straight through the night. I was like, no, you'll be up at like three o'clock in the morning because you went to bed so early. You'll be up at three and then you'll be like wide awake. So I was like, get up, whatever. So I got up and um, what did I watch first? I can't remember what I watched first. Oh, I talked to Tana Jean on the phone. And then <clears throat> what did I watch first? I watched something. I watched like one episode of something and then I was like, I need to start a new show. I kept on saying that yesterday. I think I said it on the vlog and I said it to like everybody I talked to on the phone. I was like, I need to find a new show because I just finished that Apples Never Fall. I was thinking about watching like a Harlan Coben show, but I was kind of wanting to watch true crime. Here's the thing. I've been so into true crime lately that like I go through these phases where I watch a lot of true crime and then I'm kind of like done with it for a while and I'm kind of feeling like I'm kind of done with it for a while and so I want to keep on going with it because I want to make the videos about it on my channel so I was like if I keep watching it I'm still interested in it right but I have to watch ones that I'm interested in it and that college Idaho one was just done so badly I mean it just was like it was like an episode of like you know Nightline or 48 hours not even as well done as one of those so that Homicide in New York had been trending on Netflix. It was like last week it was like number two or three, and this week it's like number four or five or six or something like that. So I had that on my list, and I was like, I want to watch that show. So I started watching it last night. That's when I made the cup of coffee. It's five episodes, and it's like these police investigators. So apparently, I don't know much about the police force in New York. I feel like I've read enough like detective novels that talk about it, but I don't know that much about it that the police departments or the homicide departments are split up into like Manhattan North and Manhattan South and so they have investigators from both departments and they go in and they talk about these old cases the first case was about this woman she was actually in Dirty Dancing and then she was like a marijuana dealer and she like was like friends or dealt to like all these people that were like stars and like on Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. And she was real well known, supposed to be like, like this really nice woman and all this kind of stuff. But she always kind of had a lot of friends over at her house. And so there was this, and she lived right on top of that Carnegie Deli or whatever that's in Times Square that's right next to where the Dave Letterman show filmed. And so there were like four people that were shot and killed or two people that were shot and I think three people that were three people that were killed. And so it was this huge investigation. They went in and they talked about that. That was the first episode. It was, they're very well done. Very, very well done. It actually, part of it kind of reminds me of the Jenks. Like if you watch the Jenks, you would love this. It like reminds me of that a lot. Which by the way, the second part of the Jenks is coming out at the end of this month. I think it's coming out the 18th. If you have not seen the Jenks and you're a true crime lover, you need to go and watch um, the Jenks, the first part. It's on HBO Max or HBO or whatever. Um, but I think that's, it's in some other places too. But the second part is coming out and it's like what happened at the very end of it. And the last 20 seconds of the Jenks are like so unbelievable. It's like the whole, the whole documentary, I can't believe it took me so long to go and watch that because it's so well done. Um, but this reminds me kind of that, of kind of the telling of it. And then the second one, did I watch two or did I watch three of them? I think I only watched two of them. 
The second one, they're like an hour long. The second one was about, I think they were called the Babyface Butchers. It was about these two kids and they were 15 and they killed this man in Central Park. And um, it was really bizarre. I was like, oh, I stopped it like halfway through because I was like looking to see what had happened to them since, like where they are now and whatever. Because most of these cases aren't super old. I think that one took place in like 1997. The first one took place in like 2001. Like they're older, but they're not too old. But they're very, very well done. I watched something before this. What did I watch before this? Now I can't remember. What are my shows? I got caught up on something that I had to watch. I was going to go in. People are asking me if I'm going to watch Vanderpump Villa. I think I am. I think the first three episodes are out. I asked, Tan Tanya watched it. And I said, what do you, she goes, have you watched Vanderpump Villa? And I was like, I haven't watched it yet. Have you? And she's like, yeah, I watched, I guess three episodes are out. And I said, oh, I was like, okay, this is what I was doing. I was looking for different shows. I went in and I looked at the trailer for Constellation on Apple. Oh, I know what I, re I just remember what I watched. Well, let's finish this part with Tanya. So, I said to Tanya, I said, did you, she watched the first three episodes of Vanderpump Villa, I guess. They're out on Hulu or something. And I said, what'd you think? She goes, corny. She goes, but I'll keep on watching it. She goes, it's cute. It's corny. She, she said, it's, it's very Vanderpump Rules-ish, but like, you know, this villa that she owns or whatever. So I'll probably watch that. But anyway, I went into Apple TV because I was trying to find a new show to watch. And so I watched a trailer for Constellation. Well, when I was looking through it, I noticed that loot I could, how did I not remember this? That Loot was number two on the trending shows on Apple. And I was like, did the, I knew the, the second season was coming out. And so like I went to it and it was like the first two episodes of season two were out. Is this my husband coming home? There's two Jeeps exactly like my husband's in our neighborhood. But it's, it's ours. I can hear the garage door going up. Right? Yeah. He's like leaning way over, waving to me. Um, so I watched the first two episodes of season two of Loot. It's good. If you guys have it with that Maya Rudolph, and she plays this woman that went through a divorce, and she, um, in the divorce settlement, became like the richest woman in the world. She got like $168 billion or something like that. And um, her ex husband is the guy that's in the, the show Severance, which I think the second season of that is coming out too. I love that show, Severance. And it's so bizarre, but I loved it. And so she, um, and then the woman from Pose is in it. She plays like the woman that runs her, her foundation. And then that one gay guy, I really like him. He was in Fire Island. He's in some other shows. Joel, I can't, Joel Kim something. I can't remember his got what his last name is. Bottom maybe, something like that. I can't remember what his last name is. Anyway, he's hilarious. I love him. He plays her assistant. And um, he was just on Andy Cohen, Watch What Happens Live. Booster. Joel Kim Booster. I love him. He's hilarious. And um, so the first two episodes are in the last episode of last season. She said she was going to give all of her money away. So it kind of starts with that. Um... It's really good. I love that show. It's really, really well done. And I, I'm not somebody that loves, like, sitcoms. I don't love, like, funny ha uh, shows. Like, really in the past, like, I've liked, like, Roseanne way back in the day. And, um, you know, Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, like, old shows. But, like, and I'm not somebody that typically, like, gravitates towards sitcoms. I don't just, I really don't like them very much. So it's kind of funny that I like that show, but it's good. So I watched that. That's when I, and then... I started, did I talk to Tanya after that? Maybe I did. And then I started um, that homicide. That's why I got started late with that show. And so I watched this first two episodes and then I was like researching, looking up stuff on that guy. And then I watched something else. But then I was like, no, I'm gonna, after the first two episodes, I was like, I'm gonna save it for tonight. So I'm gonna watch them tonight. Um, but I've got a bunch of appointments tomorrow that Alex is taking me to, so I'm probably going to um, go to bed a little bit early tonight, not stay up super, super late. I still feel like the lighting on this is really bad. I thought I turned, I did turn the thing. So I don't know why the lighting is bad on here. I'll have to like, when I, when I did that yesterday and I like switched it and then the camera stopped, when I was putting the pieces together, when I was rendering it, I noticed there was like no difference from before and after, so that knob must have nothing to do with that, but I'm not gonna switch it today because it'll stop the camera. <laughs> so yeah, so I watched that last night and then I went to bed and um, then I got up today and snoozed the alarm a few times, 
me and Boo Radley, laid in bed and slept, and then I got up and took him outside. It was so cold this morning outside. He ran around and was being crazy. Like he, he doesn't really mind the weather that much. And then brought him inside, got him some treats, and then um, I was gonna make videos before my therapy session. Oh, I talked on the phone um, to a friend of mine, a recovery friend of mine. Talked to him on the phone for a long time. And then that went right up into my therapy session, like two minutes before my therapy session. I made a cup of coffee and I sat down and had therapy. We had a great therapy session today. We just kind of like caught up in stuff. We were supposed to like do the trauma narrative, but we put that off till next week. We actually caught up talking about my OCD because since we've been doing the trauma narrative, we haven't been talking about my OCD as much. And I was telling him that like most of my rituals are gone. One of the one that comes and goes from time to time is the rewinding of the shows. It's like the one I have like the hardest time letting go of. And I've noticed it like, it's, it's interesting like on vacation, um, like my OCD rituals almost completely go away. And so we were talking about, he was talking about like, well, are there things at home I don't, that are like stressing you? And I said, I don't really feel stressed at home. And so we were talking about that. He was like, as I said, I noticed that since we had come back was when the rewinding of like on the iPad has started. And he was like, I wonder why that is. And he was like, you have any of your other like OCD rituals have come out? And I said, no. I said, you know what's interesting is when we, when we initially originally talked about it, he had said to me, if you do the work that I'm asking you to do and you work really hard on it, he was like, I have seen, you know, most people get through it in 60 to 90 days. Like all the rituals are gone. And I can remember, and I said this to him today, I was like, I can remember thinking to myself, there's no way. Like I have so, like this mass amount of rituals, there's no way. And I said, you know, of course there are a few lingering ones, but, and then, and then the rewinding of television is the one that's like, the one that I, it's because it's the most intrusive, like when I'm watching a show, like I know I'm doing it. And so I'm like, God, like other ones I just kind of like fall in habit to and I do it and I'm like, oh, I just did that, right? But the majority of them, I would say like, um, I mean, in all honesty, like let's just give a fair estimate to this. I mean, I would say like 95% of the rituals are gone, which is like crazy. When I was literally like six months ago consumed with them and so, you know, I was talking to him about, you know, so many of them have come out as a result, like, after the accident. And I said, you know, I really feel like a lot of them have gone since I talked to his mom on the phone. And he was like, well, I think that relief that you were given and things like that and the uncertainty before that of knowing it and trying to control outcomes in our head. And that's what a lot of OCD is about. And um, we were talking about that and we were talking about some other things. And I don't know, I just feel like a huge freedom from it that I've never felt before. And um, I mean, it was really consuming my day. I think I've talked a lot about it on video, but I don't think even talking about it, you. I mean, it was like stepping forward, stepping back, stepping on this slate, stepping on that tile, stepping on these things, making sure I don't step out there. I mean, it was everything, every single day. And it, it, it all, like, I mean, I had it before the accident. I've had it for years and years and years, but it really like blew up after the accident. And, you know, I said to him that I really think the conversation I was allowed to have with his mom, like really, it seemed like after that, like a lot of them just kind of like, the ones that were remaining just kind of went away. And um, so we were talking about that and, you know, I did say to him that like being home, like being away, it's like being at home, I love being home, I love my home, or I love our home, and I love the porch and, you know, being cozy and all that kind of stuff. But it is a reminder, you know, of everything, it's like, I was telling him that I know it's it's bizarre, but um, you know, a year ago it was around right now. A year ago, I think it was the sixth or the seventh. I can't remember what day it was, but I went in the hospital with pancreatitis, and I like I know as bizarre as it sounds, I really had this fear coming back. I was like, I feel like every time I come back from Miami, something you know horrible happens. And last year it was this pancreatitis. And I was like, God, wouldn't it be so weird if it like something came back, but like they said it wouldn't come back because it was because of my medication. And um, I don't know. And like, I was talking to him about this and he was like, yep, that's all that fear that we try to control, you know, of, of these, you know, and things we're uncertain of. And he was like, but if you think about that, like, when, when you rationally think about, he's like, this is where we need to, you know, rationally think through things that the idea of you 
getting pancreatitis two times at the same time, a year apart, when it was because of your medication. It's like, that's not gonna happen, you know? Like, you need to be rational about this. I was like, I know, like, my mind tells me that, but like, you know, it's, and so, I think like being here, there's just like a reminder of a lot of stuff. Like, in all honesty, I know this is gonna sound, maybe it won't sound stupid, but like, you know, I, I had pancreatitis, and then I got out of the hospital, and I didn't work for three weeks, and there's like this huge part of me that is like not, like feeling like I want to take a month off because I did that last year, you know? And the year before that, I wasn't filming any videos for like three, three and a half months after the accident. And I feel like I need to take like a month off and just not film anything. And we talked about that today. And I said, but I just like, I, he's, he, cause he was asking me, you know, cause I know I talk about it a lot over here and it's become like this joke, like I wasn't going to film today, but like we've talked about it a lot. And he was like, what like compels you so much to feel like you have to film every single day? And I said, it's not like I feel compelled like I have to. I said, it's like I sit around and I feel like, well, I'm not really doing a whole lot else besides like cleaning the basement or doing this or outlining like one of these books I want to write or whatever. Like, I'm not going anywhere. So why not film something? Oh, here's the Amazon truck. So why not film something, right? It's raining. I don't want him to have to come out here until he gets it from the back of the truck. Then I'll go get it. So then I start filming and I film one video and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna film. Oh, hold on just a second. Hey, how are you? I don't want you to get wet. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you too. I'm not gonna open this until I film the video. I think this is the coffee. Coffee K-Pods. Maybe my mug, I'm like trying to think like, <laughs> um, But I said, you know, then what happens is, he looked like Tanya's son, Nick, that was weird. And then what happens is I, um, you know, I'll film one video and then I'll be like, oh, Alex isn't gonna be home for another hour or two. I can film another video. I, can another. I try to have most of it, other than my vlog, like done by the time that he comes home so that when he comes home, he can like be in the kitchen, be in the, you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. I would, that's one of the things that has really helped by filming, you know, like outside. I do like, I think this summer also, the lighting is so bad on the back patio to film, but I, I want to like get some plants and make it really pretty out there. At least to do like my Peterism's videos where I can be like in nature and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about for this summer, like figuring out an area where I can do all my Peterism's videos, like around plants and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but it's just like I start, and he's like, well, I think it would be really good for you to take one or two days. He's like, and I'm really recommending two. He was like, I know one day is a lot for you to not film anything, not even a vlog. And I was like, and he's like, see, look at your face. And I was like, I know, but it's like this connection that I have. He's like, I totally understand it. He was like, but I think for you, it would be really good for you to force yourself to take a day minimum, two, maybe, off every single week and not do anything. He's like, not do anything, just pray, meditate, read, watch some shows, not clean the house, not do anything. He was like, because from the point that you get up to the point that you go to bed, you're doing stuff all the time. Even when you're watching TV shows, he was like, you're going through this, you're going through that, you're organizing this, or, and I'm like, that's the truth. I mean, I know it sounds like I just sit here like this and you watch TV, but I'm constantly like going through stuff, cleaning out a drawer or whatever, you know? And I was like, yeah, so I don't know, we'll see. But therapy was good today. So we, it was like, we were like at a half an hour in and I said something about the trauma narrative and he was like looking up where we were at on it. I go, why don't we just start it next week? I said, I wanna start it like on a fresh you know, note. I don't wanna like get into it and then us be like 10 minutes into it, you know, whatever. So we're gonna go back to that next week. And then our next marriage counseling session so, we didn't do this week because we just got back into town. Oh, he couldn't get us in this week, this Monday. So then next Monday is the total, total solar eclipse, which apparently he told me that like, he was like, have you looked at hotel rooms? We were talking about that. He's like, have you looked at hotel rooms in this area? I was like, no. He goes, they're going for like eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a night, eight hundred dollars a night. I was like, oh, seriously? He's like, yeah, everybody's coming into town Friday and Saturday because there's these huge things, festivals and stuff that are going on about it because like Indianapolis is right in the line. And I said, 
because he had said to me the day that we were going to book it for next Monday for the couples counseling, he goes, you're not going to want to try to get an Uber over here that day. And Alex is going to get in st in stuck in traffic on the way home. And I said, do you really think the traffic's going to be that bad? And he goes, oh yeah, it's right after that that we're going to be meeting. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, let's just put it off. Well, the following Monday, I have a hair appointment. <clears throat> so we don't go see him again until like the 22nd, which we're fine and whatever. But I mean, he said, if you guys need to come in, you can, we can, you can, um, call me and we'll get you in sooner. Um, but so we don't see him until the 22nd, which I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. But anyway, so I was talking to him. I was like, said something about Monday and he was like, I'm not working on Monday. I was like, oh, you're taking the day off of the toll, the solar eclipse. He's like, I could care about less about that. He was like, but the building shut down because they're worried in that area that it's going to be like gridlock traffic and whatever. So they're just shutting the whole building down. He's like, yeah, I'm not coming into work. And, um, he was like, so I'll just be with family and stuff that day. He was like not excited. I was like, are you not excited about it? He was like, well, I feel like there's been like four in my lifetime. I got not total solar eclipses. And he was like, he started laughing. He was like, well, something similar to it. He's like, I just don't care that much about stuff like that. I go, well, I don't really either. I go, but I feel like you have to be part of it. You know, like, I remember years ago watching this Gigi Gorgeous video and she was talking about like being part of stuff in school and not going to like pep rallies or dances. And she's like, I mean, you have to go. Like, you can't not go, right? And I can remember thinking to myself, I never went to any of that stuff. And, and there's a part of me that feels like I really missed out by not going to any of that stuff, you know, that... Like, it never occurred to me. It was so easy just to say no to everything and just not participate in anything. Do you guys hear the rain? It's, like, really picking up, and it's starting to get windy out here. I never, like, it never occurred to me to not go to things, you know? It just was so much easier to just say no and not participate in anything and do anything, you know? So... Yeah, and Tanya and I were trying to figure out, like, we're going to go to a meeting tomorrow. We're trying to figure out, like, a good time to go. But, like, with my appointments and stuff. And she's like, well, couldn't you go here? And then I could take you to this appointment. And then I was like, it's just too difficult. We're just going to have to skip tomorrow. So we're going to figure out a meeting to go to Saturday or Sunday. Tuesdays are just really tough for her anymore with the kennel and stuff like that. So we're trying to do, like, Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturdays or something of going to, like, meetings during the day. Plus, she can see better um, during the day. As far as like getting around for us to like try different places and whatever unless we go to places that she knows all the time and stuff like that so she's doing good mel's doing good nikki's doing good melissa and jason are doing good caroline's doing good alex and boo's doing good everybody's doing good ballerini's doing good everybody's doing good yeah i am kind of like over this weather though somebody said I saw it like, somebody said something on, on the Facebook about like tomorrow is like the cold day being like the last freeze warning of the year or something like that. I'm like, no, November and December we could have freeze warnings, but like they meant like of this year, you know, the spring. I'm like, I am so ready. Like next week it's supposed to be like 68 a couple days. I'm like, bring it on. I am ready for the warm weather. I'm ready to clean off the patio, the deck, the balcony. It's not a, it's definitely not a balcony. I'm ready to clean off the patio. I don't want to, here's the thing. I don't want to clean all the weeds and then like two weeks later have to clean the weeds again. Like she's constantly picking weeds across the street, but like she loves that. Like I don't, I mean, I, I'm ready to get into the weeds and get them out, but I don't want to get into the weeds once a week. Like that's not fun for me. But I also don't want to let them get so far overgrown that they get bad. We need to get more mulch this year. But those hostas are up. These are coming up. Those are coming up. So we just need to move them down there and down there. And put two over here. And they'll be fine. God, I hope she doesn't walk over here. She'll be like, Peter, there are so many weeds over here. I'll be like, I know. <laughs> we need to get to them. So yeah, tonight I've got, because last night was uh, Survivor and Amazing Race, but I always wait till the next day to watch it so I can watch it without commercials or ads. Commercial? Do we still call them commercials? And I've got Survivor and Amazing Race, but I may save that for this weekend. It's like I said, I want to go to bed early tonight because these appointments tomorrow. And I might watch just an episode or two of Homicide or finish it. It'll just kind of depend. It'll also depend on if I 
take a nap or not. I've been lo loving my naps in the evening. I'm so comfortable, like, when I go to bed late at night. And I don't think it has to do with, like, caffeine. I mean, I was thinking about it, like, versus the trip. Like, I don't think it has anything to do with caffeine or, like, taking a nap or anything. Because all that stuff I... The camera stopped. All that stuff I did on the trip, like, I drank caffeine right up to the time I went to bed. I took a nap every day. I still fell asleep, like, that night, like, very quickly. Here, I am again struggling with like falling asleep and boo really hasn't i mean he moves but he hasn't been moving that much not to the point where it's like keeping me up or bothering me it's not like he's moving like that much so i don't really know what it is and like last night i was laying there i'm like our bed is so comfortable but i will tell you i was sleeping on the really firm pillow and when we got back I like brought the, cause in our hotel, the one, we had really soft pillows. And so I brought the soft pillow back up on the bed and I've been sleeping with that. I've been putting like the firm pillow to the back and the soft pillow. I think I need to find some kind of like in between pillows that are not, I mean that firm pillow that I bought, I've been using it and I liked it for a while, but it is so firm. I mean, it's not like, you would not put your head on it and be like, this is a comfortable pillow. But I do notice that I sleep deeper on it I think it gives my, like, my neck, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Foundation or, like, gives it, you know, structure or whatever. But, like, it's not a comfortable pillow at all. It's not like, oh, this is such a cozy pillow at all. And I'm definitely more into the cozy. I definitely think I'm more into the softer pillows. So, so I put it back, like, up like this, and I put the softer pillow down here. Um, and our bed is so comfortable at night, but... I think I need more comfortable pillows. Does anybody know, like, what would you say is the best pillow out there? I got those Buffy pillows. That's what the soft pillow is. And maybe we just need new ones. We've had them for a couple years. And maybe I just need new ones of those. I love that Buffy brand. So maybe think about, I might think about getting those. But I saw this thing online the other day. The pillows were, uh, pillows can be expensive, like, really expensive. This thing was, like, the same pillows that the Ritz Carlton uses, and they're like $70, 60, I think they're $67 or something like that. And I was like, but I don't even know that I like the Ritz Carlton pillows, so what does that mean to me? You know what I mean? Like, what if they're not comfortable? I want like a really comfortable, like, pillow that you kind of sink your head into, but then it sticks. That's what I want, right? Does anybody know, like, does anybody out there, like, I swear by this brand of pillows? Like, not just like, oh, I kind of like these. Whenever I say that, people will be like, oh, I like this or I like that. But, like, no, like, I really like this pillow a lot. That's what I need. I like somebody to say, this is the brand of pillow that you need to get. I swear by it. This is the only brand of pillow that I'll buy. That's what I need. <laughs> I need that desperately. So, yeah. I hear Alex walking around upstairs. He was buying printer cartridges to put into our printer. So he must have got those on the way home. Because he was asking me, he's like, do you want our printer cartridges? Or we haven't replaced them in forever. I don't remember the last time we got the printer cartridges. But anyway, I took them out and took pictures of them and sent them to him. So, um, so yeah. And then I got some Amazon packages from that stuff that I was ordering the other day. I got one earlier. It was weird, they rang the doorbell. I was in therapy when they came. They like rang the doorbell and I was like, who's at the door? So I went to the door and it was like the package was right there. They don't usually ring the door when they bring an Amazon package. So then I got the second one, which is right here. So maybe tomorrow I'll do the Amazon um, haul. Well, it'll depend on tomorrow whether or not I can film videos because like I'm gone literally like all day doing stuff. So it's just going to kind of depend. Plus Alex is going to be like off the major part of the afternoon. He's got like a meeting in the morning and then he's taking these appointments and whatever. So it just kind of depends. I will hopefully do a vlog. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of have to see. Now I'm kind of like, I was going to start Murder Road on Audible, but I'm kind of like, do I want to start Murder Road or do I want to start The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moliarty, which I wanted to read forever. I need to look in. My phone's inside. I need to look and see how long The Husband's Secret is. If The Husband's Secret is, like, longer than 12 hours, then I'm going to start Murder Road because Murder Road is, like, eight hours. Eight hours or nine hours or something like that. I have a lot of books that are, like, between, like, eight and ten hours, which for me is, like, I can do that in, like, two or three days. 
max three days. If I'm really listening to it a lot, especially if I'm walking. Um, and books that are like 12 or longer, actually the firm was 17 hours and like 40 minutes or 17 hours and something. It really didn't take me that long to finish. I couldn't believe it. And um, the one of the reasons why I didn't buy Reese's book this month was because on Audible, it is 20 hours. And I was like, I like 20 hours is a huge commitment to me for a book. Like, I have to really, really want it. Like, there's a lot of books that are really long. I think, like, Helter Skelter is, like, 31 hours. I tried, I, I have it on Audible. I tried to read it as well. I'm not so interested in reading about that now that Charles Manson's dead. I don't know why. I will also say, as far as true crime goes, that that is one of the only books that I have, like, attempted to read. Sitting out here, I can remember reading that book when it talks about, like, the maid coming down, Celia, going into the house and Celia Drive or wherever, Celia Drive or whatever that place is. And I would sit out here and read that book, and I could hear leaves blowing in the street and thought it was people walking down the street. I was terrified reading that book. I never got, I got to, like, page 115, and that was, like, as far as I ever got or something like that. I still have it inside, I think. Um, and then It, I tried to read, and it was really, really long. And um, I still have It as well, I think. I still have I still have It, It. <laughs> and then, what was the other book? I think they turned it into a series. Oh, it was by the guy who I can't ever pronounce his last name. Um, a Little Life. It was really big, too. It has a guy's face in the front of it. I actually saved that when I went through my getting rid of all my books. That was one of the books I saved. Because I, I, I think I bought it on Audible as well. I actually bought that. So a couple years ago, Alex had like a work trip or something in Chicago. I can't remember what we went up there for. But anyway, and I went up there. And there was this bookstore that I had heard about on BookTube from this guy that was a booktuber that lived in Chicago at the time, and he would talk about this bookstore, so I wanted to go to this bookstore. It's like two stories. I can remember walking in there, and I, and I got a Patti Smith autobiography as well that trip, and I got that book, A Little Life. I got like five books at that store. And I can remember walking into that bookstore and being like, this is it? Like, it was real small. It was like the size of our kitchen. And it was, and like the register was still left, and it was like real small. And I stood up there forever, like a half an hour, looking at all these books, and I thought, it was like the Strand or something, but isn't that in New York or, or L.A.? It was something like that. It was some famous bookstore in Chicago. I can't remember what it was called. But I kept on, like, looking around, like, and, like, nobody was coming in, and I was like, this store is so small. This is the bookstore that this person's talked about, this guy's talked about forever on BookTube that I had to come to. I mean, I, like, walked way over there to find it and everything like that. I think I even did a BookTube video about it, maybe. I was like, this is it? And finally I asked like the guy that was at the counter, I was like, like I've heard about this book before online and like, this bookstore and he was like, oh yeah, well thanks for coming. He was real nice, I can't remember how it all happened. But anyway, I was like, is this all there is? And he was like, oh no, there's like a whole downstairs. And I was like, I had totally missed the staircase. There was like this staircase that went downstairs. I'll never forget, I walked downstairs and it was literally like bigger than a Barnes and Noble. It was like row after row after row and books on sale and used books and all this kind of stuff. Oh my God, it was like, a it was like a reader's delight. It was like a book reader's delight. And I found all these books over there. And um, I just was like, oh my God, I love this bookstore. <laughs> I could just see it in my head. It had all these like setups and displays and it just had rows and rows and rows of paperback. I actually, I think I ended up getting rid of this. Well, I haven't gotten rid of it yet, but put it in my donate box. This Mira Grant book called Virus or something like that. Has anybody ever read Mira Grant? It's too long. I'm not going to read it. If I if I read it, I'm going to um, listen to the audio of it. But I bought that there, too. I don't know how I remember that. Because I don't think I had ever heard of her before. But she had, like, a series of books that were about, like... Uh, I think I've read one of hers that was about... Like, this evil mermaid that was attacking the submarine or something. Does that sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> It's like two books, I think. It's like a book and a half or something like that, or maybe a novella. I think she wrote those too, Mira Grant. But anyway, I never did read that book, but I heard good things about it. Um, what was I going to say about that, the Mira Grant book? I just totally thought of something else I was going to say, and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, and going through my books, do you guys want to know what is so funny, what books I like was refused to get rid of? Number one, the Goosebumps books. So a couple years ago, I mean, it's been like four or five years ago now. Somebody sent me a huge box of liter literally like 
40 Goosebumps books, and I already have like 20 of them. I have like the entire Goosebumps collection in my basement. I'm never getting rid of those. I don't know that I'll read them anytime soon, but I'm not, I'm not gonna get rid of those. The other ones were, for years, I would go to like Goodwill and thrift stores, and do you guys know like in the 70s and 80s, those books that were aimed for like middle school and teenage, and it was always like Sorority Row, and it'd be like this girl and she was being killed, and it was by like that Diana or Diana Ho, H-O-H, and it was like those books like The Face in the Milk Carton by Catherine, whatever her name was, and the Lois Duncan books, and what was the guy's name? I can't remember his name, but it was always about like, it was very much like those Lois Duncan books. Like I, I, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer and those, it was like those over and over and over again. Well, I literally have probably, I mean, literally 40, 50, 60 of them in the basement. I can, they're all just like these cheap paperbacks you can get at Goodwill, like they always have them there. And, um, but they're all like printed in the 70s and so I think they're all out of print now. And I was like, I'm not getting rid of these. I'm not. Like they, like I'm gonna read these this summer, this summer, because they're such quick reads. But they're like these mysteries you cannot put down. It's always about like, you know, these two girls and they're popular in high school and this new guy moves into town and they like fight over them and then they find out that like he's killed like his whole family in Ohio and then it's like the whole thing. You know, it's like one of those. But they're real short. They're like 140 pages or something. And I used to love to read those when I was growing up. Christopher Pike, that's the other guy. Christopher Pike, he's the other author. So I have those all in the basement. I'm like, I just cannot get rid of those. I'm just not going to. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna read those this summer. All right, you guys, listen. I am on a gray hoodie, and I also have on gray sweatpants, and my ankles are getting cold, which I know is weird, but my ankles are getting cold, and my coffee has turned pretty much cold, so I think it's cold. Hold on. Hmm. It's a little warm, but it's time for me to go. So I'm gonna get off here now, do a real quick outro today, um, which is becoming the norm over here. So I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Thursday, and I hope tomorrow you have a fantastic beginning to your weekend. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Be nice to one another, be kind to one another. Most importantly, be nice and be kind to yourself. Uh, treat others the way that you would like to be treated. Remember the golden rule. And uh, yeah, let's just put some love and kindness out there in the world and give yourself a break. Whatever you're beating yourself up about today, you know, like I was beating myself up earlier about my weight and I thought, you know what? Tomorrow, today, later, just get back on track. You know, don't beat yourself up about it, Peter. There's, there's, listen, there's, it's not worth it. So whatever you're beating yourself up about today, just listen. When we know better, we do better. Stop beating ourselves up. It's not worth it. We're wasting time. Love yourself a little bit more. It'll go, it'll go a lot longer, trust me. And I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.